Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Digging Deeper with Erica and Mandy. Uh, we're glad that you joined us today. Uh, we're going over first, we're going through First Peter and Second Peter, mm -hmm. right? I guess so. Yep. Well, we're going to do First Peter first and then Second Peter second. as a second sequel. Sequel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to First Peter. Yeah. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right. Okay. Okay. So. I want to ask you a question today. Oh, snap. And so I was thinking about the whole book of Peter. Okay, and so the main points of this whole first Peter have to do with suffering, which isn't exciting, I know, but it could be any type of trial or suffering for a Christian. It could be anything like, you know, literally people are being persecuted in the world right now today. Like, like actually, I just read this the other day in China. They're actually kidnapping Christians, this is a real story, and giving them a chance to to deny their faith. Like they're giving them this piece of paper to read to deny that their faith is a Christian and instead say that they believe in the president, whoever he is. And if they refuse to do that, they're going to torture them. It's like a really bad situation right now. But anyway, I hate to say but that's nothing new. Christians have been mm -hmm. persecuted to that extent. Wow. Well, Starting with Jesus. Yeah. It's always been a thing. Um, but even here in America, we don't really see anything like that. But you do see things like, you know, we're mocked for our faith and things like that. Um, the book of Peter talks about how to live as a Christian and how to endure suffering and hardship like that. And so I want to ask you, Mandy, personally, has there ever been a time in your life um, where you felt like... Being a Christian or maybe just standing on something you believe led to a situation where you were maybe made fun of or made to be like an outcast or even suffered for it. Have you ever had an experience like that in your life? Um, I would say, first of all, suffering for it would be classified as the same as uh like being made fun of because you are suffering yeah. something. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, yeah, uh, all my life actually I felt like an, an outcast. Like I've never felt like I fit in anywhere. Wait, because of your Christian faith though? Because I always wanted to do the right thing and people took that and twisted it as I was Miss Goody Two Shoes. Mm, yes. But in reality, it was people felt... Um, convicted of what they were doing wrong mm -hmm. so they twisted it around on me mm -hmm. so I mean I'm pretty much used to it because it's happened my whole life but I I can always remember you know people say oh you're just miss goody two shoes you know you gotta be good all the time I'm like I just like it mm -hmm. you know and that was even before I was a Christian like a real Christian yeah. if you want to say that yeah but like as a kid growing up so being made fun of just because trying to do the right thing and yeah. live in obedience to your faith. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty common, actually. What about you? Um, so I'd say some of the main things that I remember in my life is coming to, like, pivotal moments in my life where I had to make a big decision. And it feels like <clears throat> when I read the Bible and I pray about what the decision is that I should make and what is the will of God on my life, when I... When I feel firm, like I know what that is, and I make that decision, and this has happened maybe like a couple times in, in different decisions, but I've been insulted by people um, because they're trying, they're trying to get me to do what what the whole rest of the culture would have been, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I'm not saying those people are wicked or mean or I think that they just for a moment weren't thinking spiritually weren't seeing how like how I was trying to be obedient to my faith um and so yeah I've been called names <laughs> um been insulted been yelled at been like people just really trying hard to get me to to make a different decision and that's really hard because some of the words they stick with me which mm -hmm. is wrong you know but sometimes I think, were they right? <laughs> were they true? Like, am I really that way? But I know I'm not, so. But that's just hey, how Hey, that falls hand in hand in what we're talking about it today. It is. It does, actually. It falls right hand in hand. So, 
but yeah, and that's like, it's not, it's not me and it's not you. It's just that we're Christians trying to do the right thing. And so everyone who is a Christian trying to live in obedience to their faith, I'm sure everyone has stories. Oh, yeah. And you should share it. If you want to share it, feel free to post a comment and share it. Yeah. Um, it encourages us, you know, yeah. to hear that we're all sharing in the same sufferings and experiences. Because if we're sure of one thing in the Bible, it's that as a Christian, you're going to experience suffering. You're going to experience hardship and trials and be distressed. That is that is definite. Yeah. So, and that's why that's why this whole book of First Peter, well, I don't want to say that's the whole reason it was written, but it deals a lot with that. And we're going to talk a lot about that in this series. Yeah. Okay. So, should we get into it then? Yeah. All right. So- you want me to recap real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah. Recap what we did last week. Okay, so we started this whole podcast series uh, last week in First Peter chapter 1, and we went through ch- verses 1 through 12. And that whole, everything we went through was basically just the greeting. Like, we didn't even make it out of the <laughs> greeting of the letter yeah. <laughs> from Peter. And he said he was writing this letter to those who reside as aliens. I think your translation said foreigners in this certain area. Um, But really, this is a general letter to Christians anywhere, okay? And we talked about mainly about our salvation and the inheritance we have waiting for us in heaven. Um, And then we left off in verses 10 through 12, really highlighting the greatness of our salvation that we have um, through faith by grace, okay? And he was saying, he was just basically making statements of how great that salvation is, and so we're going to pick up today in 13, verse 13, and we're going to go through verse 16, because mm-hmm. there is a lot just in 13 and 16, or 13 to 16. Yeah. Um, and this is in verse 13, finally, when Peter is giving us a command. Like, it's been statements of facts up until now, but now he's giving us a command. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you want to start us off then? Yeah. Um, I'll just read it. 13 through 16 real fast so we get a kind of understanding of what we're reading and then we'll go through it verse by verse yeah and we'll get the different translations and versions and all that fun stuff all right so first peter chapter 1 verse 13 my heading is a call to holy living that's my jam right there yeah this one so i have the esv today joining us uh called to be holy mm-hmm. I just, I love living for the Lord. I love, well, what did you say again? A call to holy living? Yeah. Can I just say that that is the first thing? Like, he's about to talk about how we're going to suffer through this, suffer through that, endure hardship. But before we get to that, we're called to holy living. Like, just because we're going to suffer doesn't mean you get an excuse. Doesn't mean you get a pity party in the past and not, not be a Christian and be Christ-like. Mm-hmm. This is still important and it's number one. And then we'll deal with how to get through the suffering later. Anyway. I think Man, that's a good outlook on that. I think I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. We'll stop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it away. All right. Let me, let me read this. All right. So think clearly and exercise self-control. Look forward to the special blessings that will come to you at the return of Jesus Christ. Obey God because you are his children. Don't slip back into your old ways of doing evil. You don't know. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God, who chose you to be his children, is holy. For he himself has said, you must be holy because I am holy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mine's, so mine says, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Those are strong words. Yeah. yeah. Like, do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You shall. Oh. Okay, let's not get, let's start at 13. Right. So we're going to start in 13. This is going to be like the A and B part of 13 because we broke it up in two separate parts. Honestly, I didn't think we'd even get through verse 13 today. Yeah. Because there was so much in just one verse. I got two pages of just one. Yeah. And you were like, uh, let's take it to 16. <laughs> yeah, and Erica's like, okay. But there's a lot here. But, yeah. Okay. So let me read my translation just to give another... Are you reading all of it or just no, 13? No, just 13. Okay, therefore... Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I gotta say something already. <laughs> After one, one word. word. <laughs> one word. 
because uh, it's important. This is yours started with therefore. So, 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 okay. So, so, therefore, this is like, let me get your attention. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. Okay, so when it says therefore, you gotta, you gotta remember what he said before that because it leads into what this is. And he just talked about salvation, um, which is a new one salvation by faith. Okay, that. It was always salvation by through the law and obeying the law, but then Jesus came and he broke the bell and all that. And now we have this, if you just believe in Jesus Christ, that is your salvation. Okay. And he was saying how great that is and how the angels longed to look into that. They were, they, you know, they desired to know how that worked. Anyway, therefore, okay, prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. So mine says, so think clearly and exercise self-control. I'm just going to stop there because we're going to look at those two things separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. All right. So what's the first part of part A, I guess? Prepare Here's your minds for action. But a lot of translations say, guard up the loins of your mind. And we've heard that phrase before, haven't we? Yeah. In the armor of God in Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. um, remember, we had a podcast on this. Yeah, we spoke in depth what each one of those meant. Yeah. And the very first, yeah, so just go back if you want to know more about that, what each part of that armor looked like. It's somewhere on the channel. Just go. And yeah. You'll find it. Is it in, I can't remember which one it was in. Just go watch all of them. Oh, Overcoming Satan or Satan. Remember? Truth about Satan? Truth is about Satan. Yeah. That's the last one in that series. Yeah. Truth about Satan. Yeah. So go find that. Yeah. And then we have really a detailed podcast on every part of that armor of God. Yeah. But it started with, right? You couldn't put the armor yeah. on unless it says you gird up your loins with the belt of truth or better translation, the belt of truthfulness. And basically, this is in ancient times, you know, plane flying above this. In ancient times, the people would wear those long tunics, and it was basically a square piece of fabric that hung all the way down. And if you were going to go into battle, if you're going to go to work, run this race, whatever, if you were going to get up and do anything, you had to kind of bunch up the fabric and tuck it in to the belt. And so they, they call that girding up your loins so that you could do something. And in the armor. So would it be like getting ready for? Yes, preparing. Yeah, because you couldn't even put on your armor without first girding up your loins. And it said specifically in Ephesians, girding up your loins with the belt of truth or truthfulness. Basically, it's sincerity, um, genuine, like your heart's really in it. You know, you're not just kind of like being dragged into battle or I call it like the... Um, like when the government makes you go fight, what's that called? The uh, draft. Yes, yeah, yes. It's not the draft. You're not being forced, okay? This is by your own will. You know that there's going to be trials and tribulations that come your way. And so you gird up your loins because you're going to, you've decided in your mind and in your heart that you're going to take it on. And that's the same phrase that's used here in First Peter. Um, mine says prepare your minds for action, but it's the same gird up the the loins of your mind. So, like, what does that look like practically to to prepare your mind? Um, well, some, I think it's this one. It also says uh, being sober-minded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, is, is that what you're asking? Well, yeah, it's, they're, really, they're really close. One, I mean, they're prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, or be sober-minded. Yeah, uh, okay, I get what you're saying though. <laughs> so what they're saying here is take every thought captive, right? Yeah. Okay. Shoo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's in Second Corinthians ten four. Let's turn back there. Um ten five, sorry. Mine says mine doesn't say that. I'm really disappointed with this Bible here that I have. What does yours say? I'll read mine. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. 
We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's what it says. Okay. So, we're taking every thought captive, right? I wanted to ask you this question. Okay. Which thought are we taking captive? All of them. Everyone. That's hard to believe. <laughs> well, you were saying something earlier. Was it in the study part of that Bible? Um, and we were saying that we as Christians, like, we don't think about that. We don't think about taking every thought captive. Like, you were saying about how if you have a good thought, that it, surely it's godly. Yeah, so that is such a common phrase, and um, take every thought captive, and a lot of people stop there. And that's not, that's not what it says. I mean, it says that in part, but that's not complete. What it says is take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And, so and what does words, that mean? Yeah, in other words, every thought, Good thought, bad thought, thought you're taught in church, thought you're taught anywhere. Take all of those captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Does it line up with scripture? Even if it sounds really great and it's motivating and you're on fire or you feel like you are, you still need to take that thought captive to the word of God. Does it line up with scripture? Does it line up with the teaching of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> now, this in First Peter, when he says prepare your mind, I always think about it like this. Get your mind under control. Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> How many times, us as women particularly, oh. does our mind just wander? And then, like... Instantly. And then, even you had you said this the other day when we was talking about this, uh, that you think about your husband in a certain way. Like, you were ready to fight with him. You were fighting with him in your mind. So you were preparing to fight for that. Yeah. You know, I was trying to come up with an example of this. Because I've always said this. And I didn't realize it was biblical until we were doing this study. But I've always had this thought in my mind. Thinking about women in particular, if I'm being honest. I would think to myself, you you got to get your mind under control before it gets control of you. Huh. Okay. And here's an example I've taken from my own life. Because I have plenty of examples. Mm -hmm. So I could be... Let's say I'm in the kitchen at night cleaning, okay? Because that's what I do in the kitchen at night, every night is clean. <laughs> and let's say my husband comes home from work and he comes in and he sits down on the couch and watches TV and I'm cleaning. And I'm like, what is he doing? Like I worked today and he worked today. Now I'm still working and he's relaxing, right? And he doesn't, like he's just relaxing. He doesn't know what I'm thinking. I'm just in my head getting mad, you know, more <laughs> and more mad. And I start like putting things away a little bit harder, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like it just keeps building up and I keep going over everything in my mind over and over again. And then when he's ready to talk to me, I'm mad. And he's just like, whoa. <laughs> What are you, like, I don't totally missed all that. Of course he did, <laughs> right? Because it existed in my mind, and I was having a fight with him already before he said a word. And I just want to say a couple things about that. One, I did not take any of those thoughts captive. You know, the first time I had a thought like that, I should have I should have stopped everything I was doing, taken that, cap taken that thought captive, and said, no, you know what, I, I do this because I do this for God and not for my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm called to be an obedient wife, whether or not my husband is obedient in anything he does. There's things I could have done to have prevented myself from escalating in my mind to that point where now I'm really mad and I'm fighting with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another thing I could have done, well, I heard this lady, this book author, she made this point in her book. She said, um, practice makes perfect. So if you're in your mind arguing with someone, whoever it is, your husband, your best friend, if you're going to go meet up with someone that you kind of this weird relationship with, if you're going over in your mind over and over again, like what you're going to say to them, how it's going to go, and you're going to say all these things, you're practicing. So when you see that person, you're going to have this perfect argument with them. And she says, stop that. That's not what we're called to be as Christians. And that's the same thing. Take those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ and let it go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um... So how do we ta take every thought captive? I mean, you went over it a little bit of what you did. Um, first, we have to recognize that 
we have to trade in Satan's lies with God's truth. Yeah. So that's where you line it up with Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, because Satan has these tactics that he uses on each and every one of us. He uses these little things that eventually turn into these footholds or strongholds. Yeah. And then he has you. Yeah, it starts in your mind, too. Yes. It all starts in your mind. That's why it's so important to really take captive those thoughts. Even the good thoughts, too. You can use good thoughts. Yeah, you can. Um, I just want to give a little bit of examples of what Satan can use. Uh, maybe you have low self-esteem. And, you know, the Bible says that God loves you, but you don't see how he could. Because either maybe you're fat, you're ugly, you're too old, you're stupid, you've messed up too many times. You feel like a failure. Uh you don't love you, so you don't believe anybody else could either. Mm -hmm. So that's where Satan is creeping in and saying, you know, one of these things. Yeah. You know, and then we believe him. Yeah, we do. Because the Bible says that there is nothing that can separate you from God's love. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says you are called. You are chosen. Yes. Yes. You are transformed. You are a new creation. It says all those great things about us. Yeah. And the enemy doesn't want us to believe that. No, so he keeps us down. He keeps yeah. us beaten. Yeah, depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Until we get, you know, we start standing on truth, standing on the word of God. That's where putting on your armor each yeah. and every day comes in handy because that helps you fight yeah. the enemy. Okay. Yeah. But we have to understand that Satan and his demon actually have that power to put negative, false, and terrible things in your head, making them sound like they're your thoughts when they're really not. Mm -hmm. you know, that is the enemy working. Yeah, because it would be ideal for him if you could just under your loins. If you just say, I can't do this, and you don't even, you just sit down, you don't even enter the battle because he's already got your mind. Yeah. You know? That's, that's exactly where he wants you. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the power to choose what you believe and what you allow into your mind. Mm -hmm. You have the power to take that thought captive mm -hmm. and just throw it away. Get it out of there. Don't think about it anymore because it's not true. Mm -hmm. So here are a couple of things to, you know, take every thought captive, like a one, two, three kind of thing. One, pay attention to your inner mon monologue. What, 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 what? What are the thoughts running through your head every single day? Like you have to understand what's running through your head in order to understand if it's Satan or if it's God. Part two, compare your thoughts with scripture. This mm -hmm. is how you so defer important. whether it's Satan or God. Mm -hmm. Line it up with scripture. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. Everything else is a lie. If it does not line up with the word, mm -hmm. then it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Number three, proclaim the truth of your life with boldness. Mm -hmm. Proclaim your life. That's what you're doing. Speak these over your life. Speak it. Throw Satan out of there. <laughs> you do not belong there. Get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Four. <laughs> There will be a quiz later. <laughs> Walk in faith. Even when you don't feel like it, even mm -hmm. when you're the lowest of your low that you've ever been, you still need to stand on the truth. It all comes back to standing on the truth. Know what the truth is. Hide it in your heart for whenever you need it. Mm -hmm. Especially when those lies are coming and attacking you every single minute of every single day. You can't do any of this if you don't know this. The True. Word of God. Maybe that should have been number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll make it one one. <laughs> one or with like, an asterisk. <laughs> with a G. It's eleven. One one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Okay. All right. And this takes time too. It's not a one and done thing. It's not. Oh, I got it wrong. I can't ever do it again. It's a. You're going to be doing this for the rest of your life, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It never stops. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Satan never stops. Right. Until the day Jesus comes back or the day that you're dead. And we're going to get into that here in a couple minutes here. Yeah. Okay. Is it that, you, when you, that you're done? Yeah, uh, okay. I'm done. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to finish this up with one last thing. Um, he says right after that, be sober. Um, 
I don't know, yours said sober mind and mine says sober. Some of them say sensible. Um, but it's the same exact word that's used in 2 Timothy 4, 5. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to read part of that real quick, starting in 2 Timothy 4, 4. When Paul is talking to Timothy, he said, people will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths, but you, and I love that contrast. People will turn away from the truth, but you. Be sober in all things. That's that same word. So you have a very sharp contrast here. You have people turning aside from the truth and turning to lies, myths, fables that says in another part of Timothy that are fit only for old women. Okay, I didn't say that. The Bible said that. <laughs> okay, so you have those people who turn away to those things. But you, Timothy, you be sober. And that's the same word that First Peter says here. Be sober-minded watch out. He says it later in 1 Peter 5, which we'll talk about later in our mm -hmm. podcast. He says the same thing, be sober for the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Like you've always got to be watching out. You've got to take all these thoughts captive because if you don't, you won't know if you're turning away from the truth and turning to myths. Mm -hmm. it, you have to be sober to know what is not true and what is true. Well, if you put it in the perspective of now, we're saying sober in the mind, mm. but I'm going to say sober as in getting drunk, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whenever you're drunk, you're not in your right frame of mind. You don't know what's really going on. Like, everything is distorted. Yes. And if you're drunk or your mind is drunk, yeah. not sober, mm -hmm. you, you don't know when things are starting to get distorted. Yeah, you have no ability to rationalize, to make sound, clear choices based on the knowledge that you have. You haven't, you can't do that if you're drunk. Right. And you can't do that if you're drunk in your spirit or drunk-minded. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I, we talked about this the other day, and I said sometimes people can manipulate our emotions to make us do something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our feelings are saying we need to do this. But if we're being sober in the spirit, we can rationalize and say, ah, but the word of God says this. And so sometimes we have to take a stand against even people who are trying to get us to do something or manipulate our emotions. We have to say, listen, um, and truth and kindness and, you know, out of this love that I have for you, I need to, I need to say no. Yeah. I need to say, I know it's going to hurt your feelings. I don't do that with you. And I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. But... I can't. Like, I'm using my sound judgment to say yeah. no to that. People love playing on your emotions yeah. because that can get you to do what you normally wouldn't do. Like, your emotions yeah. just, sometimes they control you. But I'm going to use your girl, say it. Lisa just Parker's. Say it. <laughs> Feelings are indicators, not dictators. Mm -hmm. So, a feeling, it's there to indicate you to say, hey, there's something up here. They're not to say, hey... This happened. This is what you have to do now. Yeah, make your decision based on how you feel about something. No. 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 <laughs> Never. No. Nothing you, good ever no. came from. If you don't hear anything else from this episode, <laughs> hear that. Write it down over and over again. Put it in your mind. Do not. Come on. Excuse us one second. <laughs> Sorry. We had a little interruption. Erica's still on a tire changer here. She's still on, on call right now. <laughs> Okay, last thing I want to say about that. Okay. You remember just a little bit ago I said, get control of your mind before your mind gets control of oh, you? Yes. Okay, so that is biblical. <laughs> Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, um, or you will be taken captive, which it says in Colossians 2, 8, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of of the world rather than according to Christ. Mm -hmm. So you either take those thoughts captive that people speak to you and put them under Christ, or those people will take you captive. And so then you'll be imprisoned by these ideas and you won't, it's going to be a struggle for you to get out of that. So the point is, is you, you need to know the word of God. You need to take every thought captive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the second part of that for my translation was exercise self-control. Yeah. I, I don't know which one it lines up with yours. Mine just yeah. says something completely out in left field or right field, whichever field. It's out there somewhere. <laughs> so exercise and self-control. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. It's one of the last ones we went over the fruit of the Spirit back in... What is love? Or love is? Mm. Was that it? No. 
No? No. It was, uh... Was it truce about no. Satan? Mm -mm. No. Well, what was it? I don't remember, though. I thought it was love is. Um, no. No? I don't think... It, no, well, it, it, was, it was in love is, but when yeah. we talked about the, the fruit, it was not. It was, uh... Remember we talked about worldly things? Yeah. And then the fruit of the Spirit? Yeah. And then, I think it was a series on the fruit of the Spirit. Like, there was walking in fleshly things, then the fruit of the Spirit, and then how to walk into the Spirit. What was the title of that? Fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit? Yeah. There was a, it was a three-episode thing. I don't know. Sorry, guys. We need to be more prepared with that. <laughs> but anyway, self-control. So, in my opinion, which it was the last one of the fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. I took it as... as you know, that's the worst one. Like, that's the hardest one, I should should say. Not the worst one. They're not bad. They're good. Mm -hmm. Exercise self-control. So, what does that mean? Exercising self-control, it it means don't do what your flesh wants to do. Mm -hmm. You you do what God wants you to do, what the Bible tells you to do. For one, if you don't do that, then you're being disobedient, and that's super bad. And for two, you're following your flesh. You're doing the easy thing. It's the easy way out. And we don't want to do that. Right. That's how you know if what you're doing is godly or not godly. Because if it's hard, it is godly. Because it's like the hardest yeah, thing. Definitely. Yeah, I want to say too that it's a fruit of the Spirit. So you need to be walking in the Spirit yeah. to have that. I also want to say that this whole thing is it's for Christians only. In Romans 12 too, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you first believed in Jesus Christ and were saved, you were given a new mind. You were given everything you needed to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Taking every thought captive. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, and it, and it only happens, we only have that power because we have the Holy Spirit in us that helps us to do that. Yes. So, and then Peter said that this book was written to just general Christians anywhere. It has to be written to just Christians because non-Christians don't have this ability. They haven't been, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They can't exercise the fruit of the Spirit. They don't have the Spirit. They can't exercise the ability to think clearly with that mind and, and self-discipline because they just, they weren't given a new mind. So this really is for Christians. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Jeez, Erica. Every week. She can't keep her mic still. We're going to have to put some Velcro on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So now we're getting to the second half of verse 13. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay. Maybe I, we will only get to 13. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's break this up into oh. hope <laughs> in Jesus Christ and then the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, mine says the coming back of Jesus Christ or whatever. Well, I think there's actually three parts. There's the hope, the grace, ah. and then Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. Well, let's go over hope first. You got some scriptures for hope? Scriptures? Yeah. Actually, now that you say that... She's always got scriptures, man. Hold on. She's got this photographic memory. <laughs> okay, I think it was in Ephesians. Yes, it was. One second. I forgot to put a tab on Ephesians. Oh, no. Yeah. Where's that at? Ephesians? <laughs> She's kidding. Right here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ephesians 1, 7. In him, God, <laughs> we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according, listen to these words. Okay, I'm listening. According to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. Those are strong words, if you think about it. The riches of his grace, which he lavished, like poured out in excess, just overflowing mm -hmm. on us. Past tense. So when we were saved, God lavished grace on us. Okay, mm -hmm. that was in the past. Now in the present, we have to live by grace every day because we're constantly messing up. We constantly need God's grace in our lives. Okay, then we fast forward to First Peter, where we are. Okay, fix your hope completely on what? The grace to be brought to you. So there's still more grace that's going to come to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So past present and future now we have this grace that's totally going to be lavish on us what okay. it's just 
Oh, it's exciting. Yeah, and hope is like the future tense of faith. We have faith now, we have hope for the future. It's like the same thing. You you, faith, you have faith and you believe in Jesus now, and you also have faith and you hope in what the Word says for the future. Okay, and I want to point out that it says to focus or fix your hope on the grace to be brought to you. And it's really important. It doesn't say fix your hope on... It doesn't say this. It doesn't say fix your hope on Jesus when mm -hmm. he comes back. Or fix your hope on the event. He's going to be coming out of the clouds. There's going to be trumpets and all this. It never says focus on that. It doesn't say focus on the people on the earth. Focus on the grace that's going to come to you. In other words, God had mercy on us when we were saved. Because we weren't worthy of that. We didn't earn that. We didn't earn salvation. We didn't earn his forgiveness. We don't any day. We still sin. We still fall short of the glory of God. And day by day, he showers us with mercy. We don't, we don't deserve any of that. We have this new mind. We have these abilities with the spirit by no work of our own. There was nothing we could have ever done to get that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way he's saying, it's just going to be the same way when Jesus Christ comes back Focus on that grace you're going to get. It says we're going to go up with Jesus and meet him and then go into heaven. And he wants us to remember that we didn't earn that still at that point. Right. We didn't deserve that. And so it says focus on the grace. Be grateful for that grace and the mercy that he's going to pour out on us at that moment. Yeah. Mine says look forward to the special blessings that will come to you at the return of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So... You know, the look forward, that's your hope. Yeah. In the special blessings, that's the grace that he's talking about right here. Mm hmm Man. Yeah, and awesome. look forward to that. Yeah, you know? like that's going to get you through yeah. all the trials and tribulations is your hope. Mm hmm Yeah, exactly. You can, you can, I don't know if we'll even get to it today about the being holy part. Maybe, we will, I don't know. But... If you want to live, be holy because he is holy. If you want to endure through suffering, if you want suffering, if you want to endure through hardship, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you. That is the point. Mm -hmm. Look forward to that. Yeah. There's not like there's nothing else that you can rely on. Right. For your Christ likeness and for your salvation and for your endurance through hardship. Yep. Okay. Okay. So what is the return of Jesus Christ? It was mentioned last week. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wonder what this, I know what it means, but like it said it twice. Mm -hmm. Last week, now this week. So we're going to go over what that means. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Let me get that up here. Okay. And now brothers and sisters, I want you to know what will happen to the Christians who have died so you will not be full of sorrow like people who have no hope? Mm -hmm. For since we believe that Jesus Christ died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus comes, God will bring back with Jesus all the Christians who have died. So all of them, the ones that died, they are going first. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not rise to meet him ahead of those who are in their graves. So the Christians that died before us, they go up first. Isn't that going to be a sight to see? It's like, uh, which scripture is it? Which chapter is it? Uh, with the dry bones, Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. It would be like if you would see that. Mm, yeah. You would see all these bones, yeah, just going up into heaven, like just you imagine coming like out of the ground. Those who have gone before us, like maybe our grandmothers who were faithful, and you'd be like, "Grandma, like is that you? <laughs> <laughs> is that what your bones look like?" No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, all those people go first. Okay. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the call of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, all the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be called, caught, 
will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. So comfort and encourage each other with these words. Hmm. So, like, oh, we're finally going to get our reward. Like, I know last week I was talking about, um, what was we talking about last week? Here's a better question. What didn't we talk about no, last week? That's true. It was uh, uh, kind of like storing up your treasures yeah. in earth or mm -hmm. on in heaven. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was really excited, but, like, I couldn't really understand why until I was at church last week and I got this thought you know mm. from from god obviously mm -hmm. and like because i was thinking about it a little bit because it kind of disturbed me a little bit why i was getting so excited and i didn't even know why and i felt like i couldn't express it good enough here is the reason why it's not because i'm storing up my treasures in heaven that has nothing to do with it it's being with god mm. spending eternity at the right hand with jesus Walking with him every single day. Like, that is what excites me. That is and if you don't get excited about that, then what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You've, you've got your mind in the wrong place. You're focusing on the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah. I love when you just said comfort one another with these words. So next time you call me and you're like, oh, I'm having a bad day. I'm going to be like, dude, think about the treasures in heaven being with the Father. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's what it says to do. Yes, and may maybe this is what we're supposed to be doing to get through these hard times, too. Yeah. Think about those things because that is our hope. We hope to be with Jesus Christ whenever he returns or even if we die before that, you know, you're going to yeah. be up there with him. But when he comes, you're getting you're getting your body. Yeah, maybe a smoking hot body after that. <laughs> Your desirable weight body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, can I just say something that's kind of unrelated, but I can't not get it out of my mind. I feel like I need to say it. Sure. Okay. So, I feel like in our day today, there are so many prophets. And there's so many prophecies. And in times of distress and stress and confusion... Um, like perhaps the last election, mm -hmm. um, there's so many people are like, the Lord has told me this is going to happen. Uh, God said that this is going to happen and this person's going to do this and this guy's going to be the president and, you know. There's a time frame on it. And yeah, yeah, and God's going to do this at this time and we're going to see this. Listen, I can't see that in scripture anywhere. It says when you're going through suffering, I mean, even if you're suffering because you don't know which direction your nation's heading, Fix your hope on the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what you look forward to. Not what some guy says who says he has a prophecy from God about who's going to be the president. It's just not true. Focus on Jesus. That's what you have to look forward to. Yeah. Okay. Like, here is me. <laughs> I'm putting my two cents into this. Who cares? Right? I mean, we should care. You should. But we should care more about this yes. than who's going to be the president or... You know what I mean? Because I mean, it's stressful what some of the things we see that what our government's doing yeah. right now in the direction is terrifying. I don't want to go through that. No, but, but that's when we should hit our knees and pray about it instead of talking yes. to somebody else about it. And at the end of the day, God's will be done. If that's God's will, bring it on because he is not going to leave us forsaken. Did he leave? Did he forsake Jesus on the cross? No. He let Jesus go through that crucifixion and that painful, horrible death because it was his will. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he used that for his will, for his purposes, for his glory. So even if we're suffering, living in terrible times, which we could possibly be in the, in the future soon, yeah. it's for God's glory that we go through all of it anyway. You, we fix our hope on Jesus Christ. We strive to be Christ-like in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our persecution, if it gets to that point, And we remain joyful because we know the end, what it's going to look like for us, that we have the victory. We don't need to know anything else. Okay. So that's, I mean, maybe we need to stop here. Uh, uh, yeah. We're, maybe we can do next week just by, I don't know. We'll figure something out. But we're going to stop here for today because it's been like 45, <laughs> 50 minutes already. We don't like taking up too much of your no. time because mm -hmm. you got stuff to do. Right. You praying us out today? Yeah, I'll pray. Got to do it loud. We got something running on <laughs> it. Maybe it's a pressure washer. Or the air compressor. Probably not. Alright, yeah, probably not. Okay. I'm pumping up the tire changers. <laughs> okay, Heavenly 
Heavenly Father, thank you again so much for providing this opportunity for Manny and I to just talk about your word, to be challenged by your word, to speak truth that your word reveals. God, it's all about you. It's about your word, and it's about your glory, God, and you, you have called us to some important things, and we thank you that you help us to understand what your word means, that we can walk in these things that you've provided for us. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to prepare our minds, to get control of our minds, to know when to take a thought captive and how to take a thought thought captive, God, let us practice this and just be good at it so that we reflect good on your name as, you know, we call ourselves Christians, let's act like it so that it reflects good on you, God, and help us to be watchful spiritually, to keep sober, to keep sensible, to keep control of our minds and discipline ourselves, Lord, so that we can, we can live this life that you've called us to live in, ultimately, God, let us remember to fix our hope on you. God, when, when everything's just crazy around us, let's, let's just remember that you already have victory, that you're coming back to get us one day, and we will be made into perfection. You have this salvation in this place in heaven waiting for us, God. And that should excite us and give us joy in any situation, anywhere. And help us to remember that. Help us to focus on that. Help us to focus on those things that are good, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.